Hello and welcome to this video for Electropages. I'm your host, Robin Mitchell. Today we're here in Nuremberg for Embedded World 2025 and our first interview of the day is with Ted from Renaissance. Thank you ever so much for having us today. Thank you very much. So, just before we dive into all the stuff you're going to be showing us, just tell the audience who you are, what you do, and what you like to do in your free time. Okay. All right. My name is Ted Powella, and I am the, I'm actually the Chief Customer Officer at Altium, and now we're a part of Renaissance. And so as part of Renaissance, I still had our customer success group. Um, what do I like to do in my free time? Um, I like to surf. I like to play music. Brilliant. So, Fantastic. Yeah. Finally, an engineer who's not said, oh, I do more engineering in my free time. No, no, no. Nothing like that. <laughs> Fantastic. So, for any electronic engineer who's worth it, so everyone knows what Altium is, everyone knows who Renaissance is, but tell us what's going on here today. Yeah. So, actually, what this represents, this is a new solution that we're introducing here at Embedded World, and it's called Renaissance 365. And what it really represents is the kind of the first manifestation of Altium's technology and Renaissance technology coming together. So what we've done for Renaissance 365 is that we've taken the Altium cloud platform that's known as Altium 365, yep. and that provides some basic collaboration capability, data management capability, things like that. And we've layered on top of that the embedded software development tools that Renaissance has that goes along with their silicon, um, and as well the detailed documentation, uh, firmware, things like that, low-level stuff that goes along with that silicon, to put it into that cloud platform to make it more accessible for customers, easier to find, easier to use, and work together to design products. Um, just a quick question. Um, how long ago was Altium acquired by Renaissance? That acquisition uh, took place in August of 2024, so that it's been less than a year. Okay. That explains, I, I, was sitting, I was trying to think, like, I, I, I can't remember seeing a press release of the, of the, two, of the, the, the company being acquired, so that's actually quite interesting. Um, so, tell me about like, some of the biggest challenges that engineers are facing, which is why you've developed the solution. What would you say that they face on a daily basis that basically grinds their gears? Right, well, I would say one of those things is that Specifically, if you're, if you're developing hardware-based solutions, hardware and software-based solutions, just finding information is kind of a challenge. Yeah. So I've had the experience before, and you probably have too, where you want to start a design, and, and when you do that, you go and you find a development kit, for example. And a lot yeah. of the documentation for that isn't something that comes along with that development kit when you get it. You have to go find that. Um, and especially if you want to use it in uh, maybe a non traditional or non-standard kind of application. So first of all, just finding that is one of the challenges. But one of the other ones is that the workflows that take place really leverage kind of different kinds of people and different kinds of tools. So you have software developers, you have um, hardware developers, systems engineers, you have PCB designers, uh, you have mechanical designers to be able to put together full products. And each of them use different tools, as we yeah. know, and their workflows are all very different. So all of that's very disconnected, and a lot of that disconnection just leads to um, inefficiency. And you know, I, can already, I already know that from personal experience where you have someone like me who's the electronic engineer, designs the schematic, creates a PCB, then my friend will come along, he's the mechanical engineer, takes those PCB files to try and get a drawing to then make it fit in a box. But then it turns out it doesn't fit in the box because I've chosen a component that's too tall. Right. And, it, and, and like you say, there's a massive amount of fragmentation that, that makes it impossible, it makes it, makes it very difficult to design something when you've got a big team together. So I'm guessing that what you're, what you're really trying to do here is, is to bring that team together in, 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 a, in a cohesive way whereby, whereby basically, it, it's kind of like they all work on the project at the same time in a way that they can then share information very, very quickly. Yeah, yeah, and part, so one of those challenges, I think, is a lack of contextual information that is shared yeah. amongst the whole team, right? And so what we mean by that is that if I'm a mechanical designer and you're an yeah. electrical designer, uh, if one of us is doing something and I don't really know why you're making the decisions that you are, right? Yeah. There's always a reason, but I may not know that, and so even in, regular life, right? If I ask you a simple question, can you give me something or can you find something for me? You might do that. And then I say, well, oh, well, that wasn't exactly what I meant. And so then you have to go back and do it again. And the same thing happens in the design world. So uh, typically it's cloud solutions. That, that usually means a lot of the software that gets pushed to the cloud in, in terms of performance and, and usually web-based uh, environments. Is that, what, is that what's going on with Renaissance 365? Um, yeah, I mean, I think we're, again, taking a lot of the existing technologies that we've had, baseline technologies from both Altium and from Renaissance, 
and putting them on that cloud platform so that they can be more collaborative and we can have the data shared in one place and we don't have to also, because it's cloud, we don't have to worry about setting up servers that we have to maintain and everything yeah. as well. Now, Renaissance is a, uh, as I intended, it's a semiconductor manufacturer of microcontrollers, microprocessors, that kind of thing. Yeah. And Altium is your sort of your software, it's PCB design, so schematic capture, that kind of thing. I find it really interesting how there seems to be a trend whereby, in the past, electronic engineers, they design circuits. Uh, hardware engineers design the, the enclosure, and then your software engineer might write some code. But it seems to me that a lot of these roles are kind of being combined almost into a single engineer in many cases. Is that something you're seeing? Um, in this kind of industry? Yeah, I think, you know, one thing we see is that certainly in like smaller companies, you know, large enterprises have the luxury of being yeah. able to have specialists in every domain. Yeah. But if you're a smaller company, especially a startup, or you have to wear many hats. And so the, uh, the electrical engineer, the mechanical engineer, the software engineer, et cetera, that often can be the same person or just a few people as, composed, yeah. as opposed to big teams in larger companies. And so, to me, it sounds like you're implying that the Renaissance 365 is, is it, it's not really just, it's not just a big company. It could be for small startups who, who just need to have one guy who needs to basically handle everything. And so that could be a great solution for them as well. It could be, yeah. And the other thing is that even when you're in that situation, often you work with contractors as well because they may need that specialist to do something for you. So you might work with an external entity from your company and also, again, having a cloud platform mm. that's secure that you can invite people into to see the right information, work with the right information, um, you can do that, and it also streams, streamlines that whole process. So we're not sending emails back and forth to each other, making phone calls to each other. Yeah. Oh, so you, are you saying this, 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 this platform has a messaging system internally as well? It does, actually, All yeah. Right. So inside of this platform, so this is just a, a, an explainer video that's yeah. obviously just a quick animation. But And when it gets to the start, I'll sort of walk through it maybe a little bit um, in detail, but and, and that's where we are now. So starting from the... From the beginning here, the idea is just that we know we have these fragmented workflows, fragmented tools, things like that, and we're putting all of that onto that single cloud platform and helping it to become a coherent process that's connected. And then what we've done is put together, we call them five technology pillars. Um, the first pillar is called Discover. And so at Discover, we say Discover powered by Altium because a lot of that technology was based on Altium technology. That helps you to find the things that you want more effectively, find that documentation. Oh, I like that. Ensure that you have the yeah. proper firmware installed and things like that. Um, once you've discovered those solutions, you want to move into the detailed de design phase. And so then from there, the animation will take us to talk about um, develop powered by Altium. So develop, now we go into that detailed design phase for embedded software, as you can see, but also for the printed circuit board at the same time. So it's kind of like software hardware co-design that's taking place, where the tools through that cloud platform can talk with one another. So you have the mechanical systems, the PCB system, the software, all being able to coordinate together. Um, and at the same time, we're able to put the tools that Renaissance has, like E Squared Studio for developing and debugging code, onto that cloud platform as well. So it's in one place, all those tools connected together. The next part is called Lifecycle, also powered by Altium. And the idea there is that once something is in field use, we often want to be able to update the, it might be an update to the firmware. It could be a patch yeah. to, uh, to a problem. It could be that we want to improve the performance by putting in a new algorithm. So we want to be able to do things like over the air updates. Yeah. Um, and, and again, that can be done through that life cycle capability. And that's a very interesting video because it's quite clear that um, because you guys have the, the, the silicon technology and then you've got the PCB and schematic uh, uh, software in there now, those two go, they are all hand in hand, software design, hardware design, IC choice, all that works together, which is why it makes sense at Renaissance to put all this together. But what I'm curious about is, is there, is there plans or intentions as moving forward, or it might already have it, I don't know, uh, for things like 3D CAD design or mechanical engineers and, and that kind of um, development environment? Yeah, that's a great question. And one of the interesting things that Altium has done be, even before the acquisition of Renaissance was to create this uh, idea where it's not just about tools 
from between PCB and mechanical design, mechanical CAD, for example, to, um, to just exchange information. Hmm. It's literally, when we say co-design, it means that the tools are communicating with one another. So if I make a change to my printed circuit board and do something as simple as just move where my mounting holes might be, that's obviously going to affect you on uh, the mechanical the side. <laughs> and what yeah, we're doing perfect. is, what we're doing then is, is actually having the softwares communicate to send a message hmm to the mechanical designer in his tool, so it could be in something like PTC Creo, for example, um, to say that this change is there, would you like to accept it, would you like to consider it, would you like to reject it, that sort of thing. Yeah, that, that's actually really interesting because I, can, I know for a fact that the number of times that engineers will make a change and then not tell people. So they right. go, right, okay, nope, the PCB's great, go for it. They find out the hole was moved three millimeters, I forgot to tell you, sorry, did you not see my email last night or something? And then, and, and, and that, can be, that can be really expensive. Exactly. Even for, in, for, even for individual prototypes, it can be expensive in engineering time, engineering money, R&D development, all, all that it can all be wasted. So it's really interesting to see how you've got a messaging system, you make a change, it alerts somebody else, and then everyone's essentially on the same page. Yeah, absolutely. And that messaging system is not just the software. There is actually an element where, just as an individual, I can put a comment, but I put it onto the design so it's got that context, so I understand yeah. that you're talking about making that move, where are we talking about? There's multiple mounting it, holes, which ones are you are you moving? It, it kind of feels a bit like a hardware Git. It kind of feels a little bit like a, like, a, like, a, like a GitHub for hardware, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's interesting because actually behind, one of the technologies that's behind um, Altium 365 as a platform is Git for version control. So we have version control of hardware and software built into the platform. Absolutely brilliant. So I've just got one more question for you. For the audience who are watching this video, if they want to get involved with Renaissance Solutions and the Altium, no, sorry, the Renaissance 365, right? Um, what would you recommend that they do? Oh, perfect. So actually, what we're doing here at Embedded World is, is announcing this, so really introducing it, yeah. but it's not ready for actually distribution and use yet. So what you can do is you can go to um, renaissance.com slash renaissance365, uh, and from there, you can actually, you can learn things about where we are with the product, but you can also sign up for updates and to become part of a beta program once we're at that point to get involved and start to use it. Fantastic. Thank you ever so much for taking the time to see us today. Thank you very much. Thank you.